Hi, this is Scott Ware with Radiance Magazine and the Radiance Channel on the Expansion Network here at the Anaheim Convention Center at the Mindfulness Expo, November 30th, 2019. Mm -hmm. And I have with me this wonderful couple, <laughs> Darren Cagle and Christina McMahon. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for here. having us. Yeah. So we got some serious credits here. We have a licensed marriage and family therapist. That's me. <laughs> and you work uh, with addiction? Yep, I work with addiction, helping people heal their, their wounds that uh, are driving their, their addictions. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you, <laughs> let's see here. Certified counselor, energy healer, founder of the Opening to Sacred Love program. Yes. Interesting, yeah. and that mm -hmm. has to do with single people finding their match their Absolutely. sacred union their other half yes doing the inner preparation for opening your heart to love so working through your old wounds working through your old stories changing your relationship patterns but isn't it, patterns. isn't it easier to track somebody before you've healed all your wounds <laughs> well, the healing does continue after you sure meet does, yeah. someone, right? Yeah. But the idea is to get yourself as far as you can on your own so that right. you're ready to come together with your sacred partner. That's what that's the term we use, sacred partnership. It might be right? more fun before you heal all the wounds. Right. <laughs> right. Well, right. well, and more painful, too, when it doesn't work. Yeah. So you have the wounds, but you want someone, mm -hmm. but you know you should heal a bit so you're not so needy. Well, yeah, and I guess my experience was I really felt blocked with dating and relationships for many years, and I was okay. like, why isn't this working out? So I really had a moment where I had to say, let me look inside, instead of just sort of blaming the men I was dating, or sure. blaming dating in the digital age, or, you know, the dating apps, or whatever. Because after a while, when all the same things keep happening in a relationship, yes. it's hard to keep uh, blaming them. Exactly, yeah. right? So what's inside me that's propelling all of this, right? So you actually and how had do that I thought. Absolutely. That's I worked on this mm. for a long time, right? Cool. And especially boosting my worthiness for love, and mm. um, it took about it took a couple of years. But then when I got really intentional about it, I told the universe I was going to meet my sacred partner by my 40th birthday, and I met him like three weeks before I turned 40. And how long? How long did it take? Oh, doing all the prep work. Yeah, oh, from that like, time you said that oh. to the time you actually. Met him. It took almost a whole year. A yeah, because okay. when I turned 39, oh, so, gotcha. so it came in like right, on, you know, <laughs> nice. right under the wire. And he asked me for a second date on March 20th, which was my 40th birthday. Wow. And he didn't know that. So it was very magical, but I know as a result of the inner work I did. But it's it's almost like you also, I don't want to say you hit rock bottom, because that's yeah, different. But I, I mean, I but you, you were so, you were like, that's it. Yeah. I want it by here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was just like, and I just became very yeah. intentional about very. it. Yeah. Okay. And I had to take action to ma match that intention, right? Okay. So I was doing visualization. I was doing mindset work. Yeah. And I also had to learn how to date differently, how to date in a really targeted way for the kind of partner that I wanted. And once I started doing that, dating just became amazing. And I started really connecting with kindred spirits. It was fun. And Darren was one of them. And I was like, all right, he's the front runner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm connecting with a lot of people, but this is the guy I can't wait to talk to at the end of the day so and it kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about wouldn't it be more fun to date before you do the work right right yeah and what so Christina is alluding to is something we talk about is when you do the work prior you actually attract in higher caliber people yeah. Yeah. you don't have to go through well, I said that tongue-in-cheek uh, yeah. <laughs> tongue in your own cheek <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So people want, that's that's yeah. the mindset though. Right, right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you did that, you, you made it happen. Yeah. And that's why that's one of the strong reasons you're able to counsel people on opening to sacred love because mm -hmm. you did that for yourself. I did. Did you do that for yourself too? I'm sorry, say it again. Did you open yourself to sacred love at some point? How did you attract or did you just yeah. go with what came no, along? I, I I did the work. I actually you did. I got intentional, I, I did a lot of healing work, I did a lot of exploration and um, wrote, you know, exactly the partner I wanted, all the attributes. And then uh, I actually at first went after it hardcore, strategically, went on dating sites and dated a lot, and then just got really burnt out and finally stopped and did the process of just surrendering, mm. which is not giving up, but it's giving up control. And literally met Christina like a month later, as soon as I surrendered to her. Wow, He's let very it go. Good at, but I was still intentional. He's it. very right. good at surrender. I'm very good at manifesting actively. And it okay. worked for us. It worked, you know. That's like the, what they call the human together. design. Did you ever look at that? Which category you fall into? The no, manifestor generators. Okay. Human design. It's, huh, we'll check that out. Yeah, it's in that 
in that yeah. range. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Interesting. And it's worked so, in other areas of our life as well, which is interesting. Yes. <laughs> okay. You want to uh, explain that? Well, uh, <laughs> well having a child, find, uh, finding new careers. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not just in love. It's, it's in every category. Uh, Did we're you very find a new career? Consistent with our own processes. Yeah. yeah. I well, actually use the same method for mm-hmm. sure. He so just like a couple weeks ago, he's like, "All right, I want a new career opportunity to drop into my lap. I want it to happen before the holiday season. I don't want to have to work for it." And that just happened. Really? <laughs> yeah. Into my lap. It literally came into my life. It was so easy. It was amazing. Yeah. All right. So you just one day, just when you were alone in the bedroom, you just declared that. To, he to declared the, it to me, and to I you? went with it because I hold his vision. I'm his partner, ah, yeah. his sacred partner. Full honesty, though. Yeah. Prior to this, I've been in complaining <laughs> and sending out a lot of negative energy for about a year. So, so like, once oh. he stopped that. So okay. So then it came yeah. through. So it's surrender. like he stopped blocking himself. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Good job. And for me, it's total opposite. You know, like in, in bringing our daughter into the world, for example, I manifested her for months and I was like, I had a playlist of songs that made me feel like a mom and the, ah. the, the child I wanted to bring into the world. I was dreaming about her at night. I was journaling about her. And then I felt her soul like connect back. And then we conceived and we got pregnant naturally. I was 41 and a half. And I feel like that was really um, part of it. I did the same for Darren. I made a playlist. I had, so I am very active. And it works. It how, works for both of us. How much did the playlist match what you actually like? Uh, not so you much. like the songs or like... Yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen it? No. Uh, uh, part of it, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's more yeah. about Christina. It, right. It, it, it yeah. nurtured her energy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if it was like... It, not, it wouldn't be my playlist for sure. But okay. you know, it's funny. We each had made up um, lists. Of You're right. It matters what, to her more. Yeah. Right. We have each made up lists about what we want in a partner, right? Like, so I always teach, like, come up with your five core values, and that's non-negotiable. Like, yes. these are like like someone heart-centered, for example, right? And that's yes. that's your sacred partner. That's right. Then you can come up with a longer list of, like, surface details, things that you have preferences for, but don't get too attached, right? You might right. have to surrender. So we both had these long lists, and when we compare lists, we're like, oh, yeah, we got almost everything. Mm, yeah. nice. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, pretty amazing. And that was yeah. how many years ago? Uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Four years in February we met. Master... Mm-hmm. Manifester. Yes. Dot com is what you should uh, see if that's available. <laughs> see if that's available. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm using my name right now, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, in with working with addiction, has mm-hmm. any of this informed your work? Improved it? D- added more dimension to it? But I work with couples because a lot of times the um, our, uh, the clients I work with who are struggling with addiction often have partners and families. Yeah. Um, so when I work with couples, you know, the relationship is often struggled or, or been damaged by the addiction so I do bring in the same kind of surrendering and manifesting and getting clear and intentionality um, as well as working with communication and, and, and uh, you know holding boundaries so a lot of the kind of ingredients that go into a sacred partnership but yeah it has informed my work in, in addiction as well you seem like you have a really good demeanor for the work you do doesn't mm, he yeah I think so <laughs> and when he leads guided meditations I mean people, people are just oh. like under a spell <laughs> I know <laughs> exactly it's a compliment yeah. Yeah. People fall asleep. But one thing yeah. is, that we always work on our communication, and we've we've studied nonviolent. Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication sure. and how to apply it to couples, and so that's one thing he brings into his mm. work um, in addiction and mm. the couples work there that we're really learning together in our relationship. And also, t- and that's also part of my program for singles to learn conscious communication even before they're in a relationship, so they have the tools. So, as a final mm. question, let's talk briefly about. The relationship we need to have with ourselves. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Even when you're in a couple, even when you're in a relationship. Yes. How mm-hmm. should that go? How many times a day should you just have that conversation with the sub, whether it's yeah. with the mirror in your car, and yeah. what should it be? What, what do you guys like to do? What do you or talk about? So important to stay connected to yourself, and we each have a daily um, meditation practice, right? And um, I do a lot of also gratitude and self-compassion. I'm a huge component and like proponent of um, self-compassion, right? Taking care of myself, right? When wounding comes up. What does that look like, though? What's a specific what's examples? What's self-compassion? Mm-hmm. Right. So for me, I often get triggered in personal um, yeah, relationships. He's more triggered around money and career stuff. Like, mm-hmm. but for me, if like if I have like you know an angry interaction with someone, or I feel like someone's mad at me, or you know something like that, I I feel like there's like um, 
I'm like an open, like a bottomless pit that mm. feels so incomplete and so like needy, like I can't get to the bottom mm -hmm. of it. So I sit in meditation, I actually do energy healing on myself, like I just do this visualization practice where I go into the pit, like let's go into the pit and see what's there in my body, it's yeah. somatic, right? Mm -hmm. And then usually some kind of memory is going to come up, early childhood memory, and I yeah. give that inner child a lot of love and compassion, I see your suffering. See this is what doesn't happen mm -hmm. with most people, most mm -hmm. people maybe they'll grab a drink, maybe they'll right. do something to distract food. them, turn right. on food, yeah. turn on TV, right. and you go, hold it, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to keep tripping over this, Exactly. let's go in. So let me take a moment, close my yeah. eyes. And it's the only thing that works, so I just do it over and over and over again, right? And it's like making myself the source of my own love and compassion, so I don't have to re rely on Darren for that. You know, he's mm. a source for me, but not the Because that would source. be codependent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and which which crops up once in a while, right? Yeah, it sure. Game. That's gonna, you know, then you kind of okay to have a little codependent. A little right. bit, a little bit. <laughs> okay. And how do you stay connected? So to for me, stay connected to myself. It's a dynamic process that's always mm -hmm. happening. And through meditation and through awareness, I learn to kind of just be aware of what's happening all the time. Um, if I walk mm -hmm. into a room, even right now as we're talking, I'm checking in and feeling into what's happening. What am I feeling? Mm -hmm. um, and if it starts to become overwhelming or unpleasant. Um, I breathe into it usually, talk to myself, um, grounding and get centered. Right. Um, and then even in the relationship, I'm constantly, um, I guess it's, it's a kind of monitoring. Where am I at in the moment? And, and the compassion comes in, in second by second, minute by minute, attending to that. Um, to maybe to that hurt child or what's coming up. I gave an example earlier today of um, getting triggered in the kitchen one time when Christina said something. And, you know, I first wanted to go to almost blame or externalizing it. And then I just came back to it and said, what is that? You know, and, and, and got tender with myself and realized, ah, this is an old childhood thing. So I'd say for me, it's just, it's more of a constant dynamic of just being aware of it. Being aware stopping mm -hmm. and getting tender with yourself mm -hmm. that's a good little phrase right there mm -hmm. absolutely the mindful pause with tenderness <laughs> added in <laughs> yes yes right. yeah thank you so this was great great talk oh, thank you so wonderful much. thanks for having us on yeah yes. and they can find you at Christina McMahon.org yes so that's last name is M C M A H O N, mm -hmm. Christina C H R I S T I N A McMahon dot org. Wonderful, yes. Right. Thank you so much Thanks for, for having us. Such a Thank pleasure you. to be Take here. Care. Okay. Right. Thank you for watching. Yeah.